this video, I want to explore the graphs of exponential functions and their properties. Remember that we can write an exponential function as f of t equals a times b to the t, where a is the initial value of the function and b is the growth factor. b also stands for the base of the exponential part, in case you're wondering where that comes from. We have a set of axes. It has three graphs on it, y equals 2 to the x, y equals 10 to the x, and y equals 1.2 to the x. Let's explore these three graphs in Desmos to figure out which is which on the graph provided. Let's start with the graph of 2 to the x. This is a graph that appears above the x-axis. It's always increasing. And if I drag my cursor along the graph, we have points at like negative 5.031 and negative 2.25, negative 1.5, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, and 3, 8. Let's go ahead and label this on the notes that we have. The middle graph there is y equals 2 to the x. And if we wanted to place some points, we had points at negative 1 comma 1 half, 0 comma 1, 1 comma 2, 2 comma 4, and 3 comma 8. Next, let's look at y equals 10 to the x. This is a much steeper graph to the right of the y-axis than y equals 2 to the x. Again, I have a point at 0 comma 1, but at an x value of 1, I have a point at 1 comma 10. And backing up to x value of negative 1, I have a point at negative 1 comma point 1. This graph is still increasing. It's still above the x-axis, but it is extremely close to the x-axis as it moves along, approaching the y-axis, and then it increases after that at a very rapid rate. Let's go ahead and label this graph in our notes. It's the graph that, to the right of the y-axis, is closest to the y-axis. This is y equals 10 to the x. Remember, we had points at negative 1, point 1, 0, 1, and 1, 10, which would be technically off the coordinate axis just a little bit. By process of elimination, this means the third graph must be y equals 1.2 to the x. And if we wanted to make a little set of values here, we could make a chart for x and y. At an x value of negative 1, we would have 1.2 to the negative first power. At 0, 1.2 to the 0 power would be 1. At 1, 1 1.2 to the first power would just be 1.2. And at 2, 1.2 to the second power would be 1.44. Now, that 1.2 to the negative 1, that's like 0.83 with the 3 repeating. So let's just write it as 0.83 in our table. Let's just verify that against the graph that we have. Negative 1, 0.83, it looks right. 0, 1, looks right. 1, comma, 1.2, and then 2, comma, 1.44. You see this graph is definitely a lot flatter than the other graphs. It doesn't increase nearly as quickly. Uh, it's a very slow increase. And it is the graph that is furthest away from the y-axis to the right. So where all of the graphs increase across the whole domain, y equals 10 to the x increases the fastest, y equals 2 to the x increases the next fastest, and y equals 1.2 to the x, it's a pretty slow increase. It's, it's not quite horizontal, but it's close. Now, in general, for an exponential model, if we have no transformations, then if b is greater than 1, if the base is greater than 1, then the model will represent exponential growth. So all three of these represent exponential growth. In all three of these, 10 to the x, 2 to the x, and 1.2 to the x, the b value is greater than 1. Now in our next set, we have a coordinate axis with three graphs. Again, y equals 1 half to the x, y equals 0.1 to the x, and y equals 0.9 to the x. Let's go over to Desmos and see what these three graphs look like. Starting with y equals 1 half to the x. This is a decreasing curve. It's always decreasing. 
its steepest part is now to the left of the y-axis, and as it crosses the y-axis, it approaches the x-axis, getting flatter and flatter and flatter. It's almost like you're coming off of a mountainside uh, into a flat valley. We have points here at negative 2, 4, at 0, 1, at 1, 1 half, and at 2, 0.25 or 2, 1 fourth. Let's go label this one in the notes. In the notes, this is the middle graph, the green graph, if you have a colored graph. We had points at negative 1, 2, at 0, 1, at 1, 1 half, and at 2, 1 fourth. We'll label that one y equals 1 half to the x power. Let's go back to Desmos and look at point 1 to the x. I'm going to add the graph of point 1 to the x, and what you'll see is that it's much closer to both the y-axis and the x-axis. So again, it's like we're coming off of a mountainside, but this is a really, really steep one. It's like you're coming down almost a cliff face, and you hit the y-intercept of 0, 1 when you get to the y-axis, and then almost immediately after that you go flat into the valley that's flat. So it's, it's a very uh, steep decline and then an, almost a corner turn into that flat valley. Here we have points at negative 1, 10, at 0, 1, and at 1, 0.1. I can graph those on the set of axes. Negative 1, 10 falls off the axis a bit. Uh, 0, 1 is there. 1, 1 tenth is there as well. So this is the graph of y equals 0 0.1 to the x. By process of elimination, our last graph is going to be 0 0.9 to the x. That's the purple one, or the one that looks like it's the flattest. We could label some points on this graph by making a little table just to do something different for x and y. And if x is negative 1, then y is 0.9 to the negative 1, or we could write that as 1 over 0.9, or we could write that as 1.11 with the ones repeating there. Well, if x is 0, we'd have 0.9 to the 0, and that's 1. If x is 1, we'd have 0.9 to the first, which is just 0.9. And if x is 2, we'd have 0.9 to the second, which is 0 0.81. Let's go ahead and graph those. Negative 1, 1 1.11, 0, 1, 1, 0.9, and 2.81. Boy, that looks like almost a straight line in the area that we're at in our coordinate plane. It's definitely getting very close to a horizontal line. And if you haven't given this any thought, what would happen if we plotted y equals 1 to the x? I'm just going to jump over to Desmos. I'm going to add the graph of 0.9 to the x there. Let's say that we wanted to do 0.99 to the x. Look how flat that one is. If we zoom out, there is still a curve to it, but you have to zoom way, way out to see that curve in action. And it makes the other ones look almost like they're vertical lines. It's such a slow moving curve. Um, and in fact, if we were to type y equals 1 to the x, what would we expect to see here? Well, if we typed 1 to the x, we would expect to see a horizontal line at 1 it would always be a value of 1, right? So as we get closer and closer to that 1 value, um, we end up with something that gets closer and closer to approaching a horizontal line. Now, what's the initial value of all three of these graphs? Well, all three of these graphs have an initial value of 1, or the y-intercept of 0, 1. In general, for an exponential model with no transformations, if the b value is between 0 and 1, not including 0 and 1, then the model represents an exponential decay. Indeed, we can see in all three of these graphs that the graphs are decreasing. Those are decay curves. Now, for the six functions that we graphed, there are a few other similarities. The exponential models, as long as they haven't been transformed, they have a domain of negative infinity to infinity. 
and a range of 0 to infinity. Let's just go back and look at these graphs for a second to make sure you believe the range part. So for the first three increasing graphs we drew, we can see that all three of these curves are above the x-axis, and so the range would be the values that are bigger than 0. For the next set of three graphs, the decay curves, again, the graphs are all above the x-axis, and so we can see that the range for those is also 0 to infinity, not including the 0. The y-intercept for all of our graphs was actually 0, 1. We label that on all of the graphs here. So the basic exponential graph goes through 0, 1. And then there's also what we call a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And a horizontal asymptote is a line that we approach as the graph nears either infinity on the right or negative infinity on the left, but it's not reached. And we draw in a horizontal asymptote by a dashed line. In this case, I'm going to use a red color just so you can see it a little bit better. And what we mean by this line is that the graphs approach this but don't reach it. And this is the line y equals 0. So it's true for the decaying curves, and it's true for the growth curves as well. We also have that horizontal asymptote. For the growth curves, the graphs are approaching that horizontal asymptote as they go to negative infinity, and for the decreasing curves, they're approaching that horizontal asymptote as they go to positive infinity.